everyone, it's Linnea, and I have another video for the Kindred Stamps YouTube channel and blog today, and I'm going to be making a, a background with the tile stencil, but I'm not going to be using it in the way most of us think of stencils. I think when we think of stencils, we think about different inking techniques and maybe even like glitter paste um, that we could do, but today I wanted to really kind of stretch that stencil, and I'm going to be using my Uniball Signo Broad white gel pen. And I know my hand is kind of in the way right now, but you're going to be able to see in just a minute what I'm doing. All I'm doing is just, I'm taking that gel pen and I'm taking the, the actual part that writes and I'm resting it up against the edge of the stencil and just outlining the stencil. You could definitely fill this in, but in the end, I like how it looks like fine little details and it looks like the stencil is meant to be this fine when really it's not. So. You could definitely do this with inks, and then you're gonna get that like chunkier look, the true look of the stencil, but I really wanted to try this outlining technique, and you could do it with any kind of gel pen because um, they have that like skinny um, writing tip to the pen, and here's how the background looks, and I just think it, it gives that stencil a new feel. Um, so here I am with my stamp sets. I'm using the Masters of Magic as well as the Students of Magic, and I have the, this little bald bad guy and his pet snake here. And I had to use the, the little boy, his counterpart there from the Students of Magic. So I'm mixing and matching stamp sets for this video. But I think that's perfectly okay to pull together what you need to make a card. Here's a quick shot at the markers I'm going to be using. And as always, you're going to be able to find a still photo of these markers on my blog, as well as the Kindred Stamps blog. So let's get into the Copic coloring. And you guys know I'm not an expert at this at all. So I sped it up and I cut out the parts that I thought were a little bit redundant. I'm going to be leaving the caps of my markers on the left-ish side of my screen there. And the top marker is going to be the darker one. The bottom one is going to be the lighter one. So when I do my coloring, I like to call it batch coloring. So I'm going to go around here. I double stamped all of my images. And that's something that I always do in case I don't like how I colored one. I always have a backup and I don't have to pull out my stamps and my ink again. It's just something that I like to do. And then I do, even if I like the coloring, I will color both of them and I'll just tuck these in the back of my stamp pocket so that I always have pre-colored images ready to go. So like I said, I like to do what I call batch coloring. And that is, I'll color like all the skin tones together, I'll color all the hair together, I'll color all the green parts together. It just seems to go faster for me that way. So here I am coloring the black portions of my images. And when I color blacks, I always color with my N8, N6, and N4 markers to give that shading. Um, for this little guy's vest and pants, I left out the N8 and just did N6 and N4. And so that kind of gave it a lighter tone. That way I could distinguish because there was an awful lot of black and I wanted there to be some color differences. So for the snake, I cut out most of the coloring because greens give me issues for some reason. I don't know why, but I wanted to share this little trick with you. I wanted the underbelly of the snake to be brown, but it was too dark. Um, so I grabbed my CG2 Spectrum Noir marker and I'm just coloring over it. And because this marker is lighter, it has more alcohol in it. So it's kind of almost lifting that color. It's not, it's like, it's pushing it around, I guess. But you can see how that brown definitely lightened up and now it has more of an olivey feel to it. And that actually made it look better with the green snake. So that's just a little tip for you. So for my sentiment strip, I stamped that in some Candied Apple Distress Oxide Ink. I trimmed it out, but I left that always word um, not trimmed. So I could go around it with my scissors and fussy cut around it just to give it a little bit of extra flair and a little extra oomph. And now all I'm gonna do is pop everything up with some foam tape. And I just love how everything looks on that background. This is gonna be a Valentine's Day card for my husband and I thought it was kind of an out of the box Valentine's Day card, but he's really gonna love it. To finish it off, I'm going to add some glossy accents to the snake's tongue and to this little guy's glasses, and that will be it. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope I'll see you next time. Remember that you can find still photos of this project on my blog as well as the Kindred Stamps blog. 
See you next time. Bye.